By now, you've probably heard of the technology that has revolutionized the maker movement, 3D printing. But how does 3D printing work? And what are its potential applications? Well, today, we're going to find out. When you think about 3D printing, you might imagine a workshop or a tech startup. But actually, its story starts here, in the field. Maize, or corn, is a large grain plant that was first domesticated in Mexico about 10,000 years ago. It's cultivated in every continent except Antarctica, and we produce over a million tonnes of it every year. And if we took all of those crops of maize and put them together in one single field, that field would be larger than Portugal, Spain, France and Germany combined. But how do we turn this into plastic? First, the shelled corn is milled to produce starch. This starch is then heated and enzymes are added to it to convert it into corn sugar or dextrose. More enzymes are then used to break apart the sugar molecules to produce lactic acid. The final reaction then links together these individual lactic acid molecules to produce long chains of polylactic acid, or PLA for short. This PLA bioplastic has a wide range of applications, including 3D printing. Underneath here, I've given you the tools to do some 3D printing. Okay. All right, so we have some buttercream icing, some bags and scissors, and what I would like you to do is to 3D print an elephant. Okay. All right. <laughs> now this guy's made out of PLA, but I want to see whether you can do it out of buttercream icing. I'm going to start with creating a base. Building from the bottom up. Yes. Yeah, it wouldn't be very easy to build from the top, top down. It would be very hard. <laughs> so now it's time for his trunk. Another trunk. I think that is the best I'm going to be able to recreate. Happy? Not... It's more elephant man than elephant. <laughs> <laughs> with our 3D printed elephant out of PLA, they're going up by like fractions of a millimetre at a time. So they're building it up very, very slowly. So she is probably printed over the course of several hours and you did that in about five minutes. I mean, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a closer look at how 3D printing actually works. 3D printing is a form of additive manufacturing, creating three-dimensional objects by building one layer on top of another. But instead of using buttercream, this printer uses PLA. The coil of plastic is fed into this nozzle, which heats up to 210 degrees Celsius. This is the glass transition temperature of PLA, which turns it from a relatively brittle glassy plastic into a molten state, which can be extruded through the nozzle and instantly sets in place. The nozzle can move in the X and Y axis, and the bed moves up and down in the Z axis. That way, it can deposit the plastic in any point in three-dimensional space. All we have to do is give it a set of instructions. The nozzle knows where to move. These instructions come in the form of a 3D model, which looks like this. All we have to do is upload the digital file and press print. In order to support the growing structure, it sometimes needs to build a scaffold, which is later removed. But depending on the size, complexity, and level of detail, a single print can take anywhere from days to just a matter of minutes to complete. But besides creating awesome sculptures, what are some of the potential applications for this technology? As well as the creation and rapid prototype typing of newly designed products here on Earth, the International Space Station is currently testing whether new equipment can be printed in space rather than shipped up into orbit. The world of fashion is embracing the new technology to combine art and engineering. You can even print chocolate! Doctors and surgeons are also using 3D printing to create individual replacements for bones and joints. And research is currently making progress using living human tissue to print organs for transplantation. Here in Bristol, a company called Open Bionics is using PLA to 3D print custom-made bionic hands at a fraction of the cost of other alternatives. The applications seem limitless, but what do you think? What could the future hold? What would you like to see printed? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, click like, share it around, and click on my 3D printed theropod dinosaur brain to subscribe. And for more tinkering videos, check out our Furby dissection. Thanks for watching.